This past Friday marked the 55th anniversary of the assassination of civil rights activist Malcolm X. The 39-year-old was shot and killed while speaking at the Audubon Ballroom in New York City. Three members of the Nation of Islam were later convicted of his murder, but there have long been doubts surrounding his death. A new documentary series on Netflix, Who Killed Malcolm X, reveals new findings and is raising new questions about his murder. NewsHour Weekend's Yvette Feliciano spoke with director and series producer Phil Bertelson and series historian Abdurrahman Muhammad. Phil Bertelson, Abdurrahman Muhammad, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So first off, before watching this series, I had no idea that there were so many questions surrounding Malcolm X's murder. Can you briefly outline some of the holes in the story of his killing and what prompted this series coming together, the production of this? Well, ever since 1966, uh, when three men were convicted for the assassination of Malcolm X, uh, scholars have always questioned the soundness, the, uh, the validity of that uh, verdict from the very beginning. There might well be one of the assassins still out there, hiding in plain sight, gone unpunished, unquestioned, and protected to a certain degree uh, from, from prosecution. And, you know, you're an independent historian, but this happened uh, decades ago, and you've spent the better part of your life researching the truth behind Malcolm X's assassination. Just correct. Many people told you to drop it. A lot um, of people told me to drop it. <laughs> So why was that so central to you, specifically as an African-American Muslim? Well, because I felt a sense of responsibility. Uh, as I moved along, uh, I accumulated more and more facts and information regarding the case. And it became clear to me uh, very early on that, you know, if I didn't continue, it wasn't going to be done. J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, was definitely afraid of someone like Malcolm X. We would have never been able to get to the bottom of the story because this type of uh, case uh, involved documentation and interviews. You had to go out into the field and talk to people. It's not something that you could solve merely by studying, you know, let's say, uh, declassified documents and, and things like that, wiretaps. You had to go out and talk to people who were still alive, you know, and once that generation passed away, the story would have been lost forever. In the 1960s, the FBI launched one of the biggest counterintelligence operations in its entire history. Black people everywhere today are fed up with the hypocrisy practiced by whites. And they kept a very close watch on Brother Bell. And if something isn't done, then I'm afraid that you will have a racial explosion. Did you get any pushback from folks in the African-American Muslim community or local and federal authorities? Are there people who didn't want this series made? For sure. I mean, the fact remains that some of the answers that we're seeking in this story are ones that people didn't want others to know. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent that we had to push harder, um, be more persuasive in our argument uh, in order to get those answers, um, you know, should say everything there is to be said about why this has been a widely held secret for, for, for generations now. And um, we go into the fact that it's not just one man who killed Malcolm X, but you know, a kind of complicity on the part of governmental authorities and law enforcement as well. And those are entities that don't like to be exposed. Um, so you know, we had to try to put the pieces together and, and, in order to you know, have an argument uh, as to who killed Malcolm X. And so what can audiences expect to learn from this series? Do you actually answer that question of who killed Malcolm X? Yes, we do. It's really pulled back the veil on this historic uh, crime that uh, was really an open wound, really, in not just the African-American community, but the world community. And, you know, the, the, the fundamental understanding you know, of who pulled that shotgun, uh, who were involved, Yes, we answer that question. I think we go beyond that question as well. I think we uh, not only look at who killed Malcolm X, but who didn't. And who was Malcolm X is also a big part of the story. I think if you begin to ask yourself that question, who killed him, you, you want to know why. You know, what did he represent that made him such a threat that caused so many forces to align 
uh, against him. You seem to be dissatisfied with everything. Just what do you want? I'm not dissatisfied with everything. I'm just telling you that the Negroes themselves should take whatever steps necessary to defend themselves. He was a powerful, galvanizing figure for many, and uh, he posed a threat to the status quo in such a way that you know people felt he had to be eliminated. So you learn a lot about Malcolm, you may not have already known, and you also learn that two men, it's our belief, went to prison for 20 years for a crime they did not commit, um, this crime. And um, as a result of the work that we did in the series and the evidence that we show, uh, the Manhattan DA's office has decided to take uh, a preliminary look at whether or not this case is worth reopening. Phil Bertelson, Abdur Rahman Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having it's been us. A pleasure. Thank yeah. you.